Absolutely, Jenny. It's not 5.30 yet. Hold on. Oh, shit. <laughs> I'm looking at two clocks that say 5.30. Okay, we have 5.30 now. Let's stand oh, for the clock. Oh, okay. <laughs> Let's read this to the flag of the United States of America, transmitted the following for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice. Roll call. Wow. Benny David. Here. Roger Mayhew. Yes. Charles Wilty. Here. Brenda Simmons. Here. Frank Scott. Here. Item two, approval of the agenda. Are there any additions or corrections, commissioners? I have no changes. Um uh, yeah, I'm using I don't even have it weird out here. Just a second. I want to talk about um the state taking over the township and county authorities. Because we're trying to get it put back on the ballot and I've I've got some information about that. Are you talking about the solar energy? What what exactly windmills and solar. They took oh. our rights away from us. Yep, yep. Yeah, I want to talk about that tonight. Where are we going to put it? Um, so that's actually. Would you like that to go under? Where new Seven, business? Eight, new business. It's fine. New business. Yeah. So let's go B. Let's go under claims. Okay. Any other additions or corrections to the agenda? No, I'll make a motion to accept the one change. A motion, Commissioner Scott. Support from Commissioner Wilty. Any further discussion? All in favor say yes. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item three, declaration of conflicts of interest. Are there any commissioners? I don't think I have any today. No. Item four, review of minutes, February 8, 2024, regular meeting minutes. I've read the minutes, so I'll make a motion to accept them as presented. Motion, Commissioner Scott. I'll support Support that. from Commissioner Wilty. Any further discussion? All in favor say yes. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item 4B, February 15th, 2024, Committee of the Whole Meeting Minutes. I read the minutes and I'll make a motion that we approve them as presented. Motion from Commissioner Scott. Honestly, I did read them. I, I did as well. I would hope so. I support. Support from Commissioner Wilson. Any further discussion? All in favor say yes. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item 5, public comment on agenda item manners only. Any public comment in the room? Any public comment on the phone? Item six, correspondence. Uh, we received correspondence from Alpena County, Chippewa County, Huron County, uh, related to the supportive statewide ballot initiative, um, opposition to legislation preempting local control. Uh, those have been received and filed. And we also removed the Michigan Department of Natural Resources uh, related to surplus property sales. Are we doing anything with that, Tim? Uh, unless you would like to uh, claim one of those properties, no. Uh, so what this is, is just property the DNR occasionally puts up. The local units of government get first right of refusal. I suspect the townships involved received a similar notice. And there's a, a period, I forget the deadline date, if we want to uh, bid on one of those properties. Uh, frankly, I don't know what use we'd have of them. It's yeah. the first time I had seen that, I guess. I, I And there was quite a few properties out there. There were. Um, I think you got the statewide list. I or, Tried to narrow it down to to the Ogama, but it's it's pretty. Wait, that's a pretty, few acres with yeah. each parcel. Thirty, there's like thirty some acres. Is it anything you guys want to talk about? No, no. He, like he hit it with uh, a lot of times. Townships might want to grab up on it. I didn't hear, but I, I missed two townships. I didn't hear any of my townships talking about it. But uh, item seven, consent agenda. How about we take these? Are you guys okay taking these one by one? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, item 7A, resolution to amend the fiscal year 2024 fee schedule. Um, this resolution is sponsored by Sheriff Ryan Gilbert, the prisoner reimbursement to the county. I act allows the county to seek reimbursement for any expenses incurred by the county in relation to a charge for which a person was sentenced to a county jail or not more than $7 per day for the expenses of maintaining that prisoner for the entire period of time that person was confined in the county jail, including any period of pretrial detention. Approval of the resolution would amend the current fee schedule to include an inmate reimbursement fee of $20 per day. Um, move that we uh, adopt the resolution. I'll second. 
Motion from Commissioner Scott, support from Commissioner Simmons. I, I read through this and I, and I wasn't at the meeting, but I, I did watch the, the video and I still, I guess it's, I, I'm thrown off by the 60 and the 20. Can you explain that? I, I understand the 20. I don't know where the 60. The, uh, and I certainly would defer to um, uh, any correction offered by the chair, but my understanding is they are very aware that charging the inmates might impact their uh, revenue from the uh, from Tom, the commentary fund, and so what they're attempting to do is to you know find that balance. What would be a fee that would be you know paid, but one that would not impact the commissary? Uh, there's also the thought on the um, contract with Oscoda County that we are what is it thirty three thirty five dollars a day per inmate. Uh, by doing twenty, that still keeps them under the sixty total. But they were uh, actually in contact with the county attorney's office about whether or not there there was any other uh, contractual obligation that we might uh, need to consider. Um, but that's really the gist of it. Um, and then the, you know there was uh, some discussion that they've had with the court about uh, sentencings and, and pretrial and all all that formula. So hopefully that's all worked out now as well. Did we hear back from the county? Because that's how we kind of left it at the committee of the whole. You're waiting to hear back from the county attorney for the for the out of town inmates. Right. Those conversations were between the sheriff and the attorney. I haven't been involved and I have not had an update. Okay. So can we make sure that we put that in the committee of the whole so we can make sure we are all on the same page as far as the out of and I, I just like to make a statement. Out of county inmates. Go ahead. So this is great. I'm really glad that we're at this point. You know, it's been I think probably around three weeks now or so, and we should have information regarding this, our out of county inmates. You know, it shouldn't take that long to be able to get this information. It's valuable that we get this in motion. You know, mm -hmm. I'd like to see this, get some clarity on this. Yeah, I cannot explain the delay. No, I, 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 under, I understand yeah. that. I'm just saying it's been a time to keep this moving. Right. Okay. Go ahead. This was talked about initially with the uh, law enforcement committee. Charlie, Charlie asked Lori Beck, yeah, yeah, the I administrator remember. to come in and, and talk, and and that was a few months back. Yes, two months back, December. Yes, two months, December. Yeah, yes, and she spelled out how they do it up there, and it's very simple. The the state statute says that counties can charge up to $60. That's the $60 number. It's the state law says we can go up to $60. Ross Commons just doing 20. And it's been working good for them. And she even told us, she told us that anybody came in from out of county, they they would just bill it. But our sheriff's department wants to go another step further and talk to attorneys so well is it similar and i guess i, I don't recall the question for, for ross common county they charge um for the like the 35 dollars a day on, and then they also charge the 20 dollars to the actual inmate so the county's getting charged and the inmate which makes that's, sense that's i just want to make I sure from, they, they did not do it for the federal inmates and they only had like four federals question and the federals were already paying the federal government pays 70 or something like that is it that high now it's like, actually in some wanna... in some jails are getting ninety ninety two dollars. Yeah. There's a variance for some reason. I think ninety to seventy to ninety dollars. Did you have something, Commissioner Simmons? Yes. Um, when you said twenty dollars, can we recover the expenses that we pay for their medications and stuff? I mean, that would take it over twenty dollars a day. You understand what I'm saying, from? I mean, do we pay for all the medications too, or? Well, they may have insurance to pay for their own medications. Right. Right. Yes. I mean, their insurance will pay for, if, if they, they have, have insurance. They have but if they don't, then maybe they should. Well, we can. We can go up to $60. It's not just room and board. It's expenses. Exactly. That's, yeah. And I thought, well, you know, some of them have a lot of medical bills and dental bills and a lot, a lot of bills. We seem to get uh, quite a large pharmacy bill from our, our medical contract. I mean, I really think we need to look into that. What? I mean, the farm, the medication costs. Yeah, and that it is, it is being built through there. Think about it. Our taxpayers are paying for their medication. 
I know what some people just get arrested so they get their teeth taken care of. Okay. We'll find out. Make sure that's on the committee of the whole so that it doesn't get dropped. Do. We're all on the same. Any further discussion on this? No. At least this is one step in the right direction. Um, roll call vote. There's money involved. Jenny David. Yes. Roger Mayhew. Yes. Charles Wilty. Yes. Brenda Simmons. Yes. Craig Scott. Yes. Item 7B, resolution to authorize and adjust to the fiscal year 2024 Ogemaw County budget. This resolution is sponsored by Special Budget Adversary, Adversary Committee. At their meeting held on February 9th, the Budget Advisory Committee asked the Board of Commissioners consider an allocation of $3,000 for printing and publishing of certain educational documents. Approval of the resolution would authorize transfer to the requested funds from the Appropriations Contingency Line Item to the Board of Commissioners Printing and Publishing Line Item. The transfer is consistent with Section D of the Budget Transfers Policy. I'd like to make a motion. Motion, Commissioner Wilsey. Any support? Well supported. Support from Commissioner Scott. Uh, discussion? I guess I watched the video on it. Um, this is related to the Headley. Um, and and uh, it basically, is, if I understood it correctly, was was uh, printing, uh, pam I want to say pamphlets, but- uh, Public information. Yeah, for, for residents. I guess my, and I know this is, I believe what they did in 2016, but I, I, I struggle with, with $3,000 here because there's so much free advertisement now out there with social media. Uh, we have two local papers. Um, I, I guess, can, can I get further explanation on this? I just recall from the meeting we had last week, uh, Randy brought in the flyer and brought in information, not just for printing, but also the uh, postage that will go out so that each household in the county receives the, uh, a flyer so much as it is a card. Uh, and we are talking about even on that card, putting a QR code on there so people can pick up their phone and get more information connected right to our web page uh, and do um, uh, some some of their own uh, personal calculation and uh, commissioner simmons has put together quite a set of um, spreadsheets where a person can go in and type in their taxable value and they will get the cost uh, immediately so it's it's pretty pretty slick um, but that's that's the idea probably using all of those uh, media sources you mentioned uh, as part of the campaign but this is primarily going to go toward that mailing uh, that goes out both the printing and the postage for it and that's almost the entire three thousand dollars for that and you you had left the meeting uh i watched it commissioner simmons and, and you were looking to see where this three thousand dollars was was going to come from are, are you comfortable with this coming from this line item is is that what you're you kind of left it open-ended in the meeting um it's come from contingency yeah no i don't have i don't have a problem with that but it's for educational purposes only educate uh, the people who live here and uh, the people who vote us into office so that we can educate them and not leave them um, wondering what it's all about, what the Headley's all about, and what it will cost. Uh, and that will all be provided and it will be all hopefully on our webpage. Uh, I was going to bring it back tonight, but um, we did we did some reconstruction because someone was concerned that I reset in court wasn't on there. And uh, we did make some changes, but it means it had to go to two different sheets to do that, which would be rather confusing to just anybody when you just go put your taxable value in here and push the button, hit return, and I mean enter, and then up pops up everything without going to another sheet. Why well, did the Arisa and the core stuff, especially the core stuff, and I mean, it wasn't even a dollar, it would increase. So I didn't put Arisa or the core on there because it would be so minuscule, the increase of tax uh, by the headlight. And uh, my understanding is the core was brought up not too, many, too long ago, what, a year or two ago? So, I mean, they just got a little dinky-winky, you know, um, part of a millage. And I think to, to me it was like, uh, it was less than a dollar. So I didn't put it on there just so the people wouldn't be confused. But on the bottom, it'll say, um, these calculations do not include IRISA or CORE, and it could range anywhere from 
two dollars to twenty five cents. Believe it or not, mine was twenty two cents. So um, and that would be on. So they understand that it doesn't include. There could be anywhere from twenty some cents to up to two dollars difference added on besides what this is, because it's just too complicated to put Irisa and the, the core on there. And and I pay core, I don't pay Irisa. And there's people at Mills that pay Irisa and don't pay core. So it's just one that will, whoever pays core doesn't pay Irisa, is my understanding, and vice versa. So it's it's very negligible what the increase would be, almost that you wouldn't hardly even see it. Any any further discussion? No, I just like can. That was what covered from. Contingency line item. So how much is that leaving that line item if the 3000 is removed? 12503 And if we have, uh, I'm thinking if we have enough donations, uh, that sum could be less than that, right? If we have enough donations. Potentially, yeah. 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 So there's a possibility it might not be the $3,000, maybe less than that. Commissioner Wilson? Uh, I just want to add that we're also forming a committee so we can take donations. So we'll work on that to uh, try to get as many donations as we possibly can. And then um, back to your social media comment, uh, Tom is creating a Facebook page and we'll work real hard to get that Facebook page out to our residents. And then to go along with you know, the amount of money that's being spent for these, these flyers, because a lot of times you go through the mail, what happens? <laughs> You know, so we're hoping to have that Facebook page really going, get it out there, and we're going to, you know, tell our residents when it's going to get sent out. Hey, keep an eye out for this because it is going to have very valuable information on it. So we're That's really good. putting a lot of thought thought into this. Commissioner Scott? No, I don't have anything to say. What, Commissioner Simmons, did you have something? No, I just say I'm glad that we can put it all out there so there's no surprises for any of our, our people that live here in Ogemaw County about this headly override. I want them to know everything, exactly what's going to cost them. Um, that's why we have this uh, spreadsheet, and you just put your uh, taxable value in there, and it'll tell you exactly what the old is, what the new is, and what the difference is. So pretty simple, pretty nice, really. Yeah. I, I again, I appreciate all the work, and it sounds like you guys are definitely on top of this. I, it's definitely not that I'm not in favor of this. I, I think. I think um, bringing this to the voters and letting them make the decision, educating them. Um, but I, I, I'm not comfortable with the three thousand dollars because of all the ways, again, that we can do this where it won't be any cost with social media, with us at the townships educating. Um, so my vote has nothing to do with the actual millage; it just has to do with that three thousand um, dollars. We still have time, maybe some donations. Uh, there's lots of time between now and in May. Um, we have to have these out before May, though. Not 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 right now. We don't want them out now because by the time May gets here, they'll forget uh, what right. the information have, is. Have, so, but it will be on the Facebook page. Yeah. Any other discussion? Roll call vote. Well, what? I guess on your point, did you you want to? Do you want to wait one month and see what kind of donations come in to offset? The cost? I think this can be brought up again. Um, I think this can be, a, you know, I'm only one vote. I was, it was given my opinion. I, I want to make sure that my vote is not taken out of content, that, that I'm not supporting this and not going to educate on this and promote this and, and on and on and on. It just has to do with $3,000 right now for posters in a pamphlet when there's lots of free advertisement out there. I think we need to go that route first and kind of see where we're at and see where the public's at and get a feel for um where the need is so that was my that was my only point i i, I get what you're saying i guess i'm not opposed to waiting a, a month to take action on it and that still would give you enough time. print lead time and, and mail time but uh, let's say the donations don't come in are you going to vote against doing it a month from now i can't yep. not I promise I, you the outcome. I, hold on. I can't necessarily answer that. Again, my only point of all of that was was this vote has nothing to do with the actual Oh, knowledge. I get that. I get that. I really do. And because I I, was I understand certain that that was the next thing that was going to be thrown out there. No, no, no. I understand exactly what you're saying. Yeah, I, I really do. 
It's just, if we waited a month and a whole lot of donations didn't come in, um, if you're just going to vote for it then anyway, even if the amount of donations didn't come in, we might as well just act on it now. You can't, I, I can answer that. Hmm? You, can't wait a month. you can't wait a month. March 23rd is when the absentee ballots start. Oh, so oh. that's for me. Literally, um, so you'd want to yeah. have mailings out before absentee ballots go out. Mm -hmm. And we have to have it out. Well, if they are sent out, then when do, can they send them back any time? Is there a, a time? I know nothing about absentee ballots. ballots. I don't. Yeah. Would so you... any time from the time they get them, there's not a time. Well, for them to mail them so we have to deliver them to. Well, they'll be delivered to the clerks March 23rd. Then they send the application. The application comes back and then they'll get the ballot. So it literally could be March 24th. People are getting their ballots. Is there a time frame when they... They can, they, can, they can vote up to election day. You can bring your absentee ballot in on election day now. So from March 23rd until May 7th, they can vote. Mm -hmm. Okay, but That'll... predominantly, when do the ballots, the absentee ballots, the majority come back within the within um, a week, two weeks, or or a month or two after they're sent out? Usually, like the two weeks leading into the election, so like the really? and well, we have it's right like now. Some... I checked today for the sheriff and there's 603 that still are out there that need to be returned out of like 2,500. And when would they have received those? I mean, how long ago was that? A while that? ago. So the majority of people tend to wait towards the, mm -hmm. the date of the actual election. Yeah. Yeah. Any other discussion? Roll call vote. Rick Scott. Uh, oh, yes. Jenny David. No. Roger Mayhew. No. Charles Wiltsey. Yes. Brenda Simmons. Yes. Item 7C, resolution to appoint a member to the Sabo Valley Community Mental Health Authority Board. This resolution is sponsored by the Sabo Valley Community Mental Health Authority. The term of a Sabo Valley Community Mental Health Authority Board member, Gary Clacking, will expire on March 31st, 2024, and Mr. Clacking has confirmed his desire for reappointment. Approval of the resolution will appoint Mr. Clacking to the authority board for a term ending March 31st, 2027. I'll make a motion to approve the resolution. House support. Motion of Commissioner Scott, support from Commissioner Simmons. Any further discussion? He's on the mental health board now, does a great job. I'm sure they want him back. I'd want him back. Yeah, absolutely. My board. He does such a good job. All in favor say yes. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item 7D. Resolution to amend the Ogama County Emergency Dispatch Authority County Final 911 Service Plan. This resolution is sponsored by the Emergency Dispatch Authority. The designation of the Ogama County Emergency Dispatch Authority Public Safety Answering Point change from dispatching duties were transferred from the county to the Emergency Dispatch Authority. However, formal notice of this change was overlooked during the transition period. Approval of the resolution will affirm the Ogemaw County Emergency Dispatch Authority as the official public safety answering point as required by the Emergency 911 Service Enabling Act. I will make that motion. Is there support? No support. Motion with support. Any further discussion? I heard Jesse was at the Committee of the Whole. This is just a formality. It was overlooked. Any further? Um, all in favor say yes. Yes. Opposed? Motion carries. Um, item eight, new business claims. Claims of $244,511.81. Four review claims? I did. I did. Commissioner Scott, you had the floor? Uh, there was some big ones, but they were like the state of Michigan Department uh, Health Health and Human Services it was like twenty two thousand. There was uh, some court costs. Uh, the the Ross Common Court uh, portion of of Circuit Court um, is forty three thousand dollars. Of course, we had two two billing cycles. It was really low also coming in last two weeks ago. It's only like eighty two thousand dollars. I mean that is 
very low. Uh, nothing really jumped out. It just seemed like we got everything at the same time. District court um, uh, software stuff, ten thousand uh, 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 dollars. Indigent counsel. We had some, a couple attorneys up near ten thousand. Building uh, building department or the housing department had had uh, costs uh, like almost ten thousand dollars. So everything just kind of casket came in at the same time and and uh, it is pretty pretty heavy this time around. Medical examiner was uh, I think isn't quarterly, that... isn't that quarterly? It is, yeah. and it is on the quarter. You know, snow removal was on there too. Snow removal was on there. Yeah. Yeah, I know so, that's the one I caught my eye. Yeah, <laughs> the medical examiner of snow removal was what caught mine. Yeah, so uh, and then uh, in like registered deeds, uh, the fiddler technologies, which is all computer stuff, and it's all paid through on the on that on that fund, but it was nineteen thousand dollars. You know, I mean, we just got hit all all at the same time with a lot of bills. So. I'll make a motion to go ahead and approve them. Motion, Commissioner Scott. Second. Support from Commissioner Simmons. Any further discussion? And I think I have to include the total. Mm -hmm. Have to include what? The total. I, oh, $244,511.81. Thank you. I already said that. Any further discussion? Roll call vote. Brenda Simmons. Yes. Craig Scott. Yes. Jenny David. Yes. Roger Mayhew. Yes. Charles Wiltsy. Yes. Uh, new business or the solar energy. Uh, Commissioner Simmons. Okay. This has to do with uh, wind and solar energy. And there are um, two proposals that will be on the November ballot that will impact townships. One of them is an initiative petition, and the other one is a constitutional amendment. I want to talk about the initiative petition right now. And the initiative petition submitted by Citizens for Local Choice seeks to repeal Public Act 233 of 2023, the law enacted last year that gives uh, siting, sitting authority for large-scale renewable energy facilities to the Michigan Public Service Commission. The Board of Canvassers approved the form of the petition and following summary language for the petition. Um, and I'll tell you what it is. So what this is saying is that we want... Um, the authority to put it back to the townships and not leave it at the state. Uh, because my understanding, there's some more other things coming up that the state would like to take over also. And, you know, once that camel gets its nose under the tent, pretty soon that camel is going to fill the whole tent up and we'll have nothing left for us. So, and what this is, I had petitions. I did not bring them this evening. I was not, I was not ready this evening. I'm sorry. Um, but I would like to have help from all the townships to put these petitions out, take them out, have people come to them uh, to sign them, uh, and then bring them back to us by the 10th of May so we can verify uh, that they're good signatures, and then we'll send them back to this um, committee, the um, uh, Citizens for Local Choice. So they they called me uh, about a week a week ago, I guess, and I, and I had the petitions. But Mr. Um, Jim Dolahanny is um, the captain for Ogemaw County, and um, our best to cover the whole county would be to get the townships involved to get signatures on these petitions. I will have these petitions at the uh, MTA meeting on the 29th. I will also have with me on the 29th the program for the have the override so people can see how much their taxes would increase. And uh, if they want it, <clears throat> they want it, look at what the taxes would be. But remember, it's taxable value. That goes in that little yellow box that's on, on this spreadsheet. <clears throat> and you just hit, re hit enter. And tells you automatically what your old tax is, what your new tax is, and what the difference is. Yes. What I was going to recommend, because um, I, if you read these correspondence that we received, is, is 
is exactly what you're talking about from Alpena, Chippewa and here right. in County. I know that. So what I was going to request um, was that this be put on the committee of the whole for next week. So we have an open candid conversation about this. We have a planning meeting um, Wednesday where this is, I haven't looked at the agenda, but I know it was on there um, where we're going to make some hopefully decisions as far as what we're looking at doing as far as uh, from a county perspective. Um, oh, so you don't know, you don't know if you want the state or the townships to have the authority. Is that what you're saying to me? That's not what I'm saying to you. What I'm oh, saying is I would like this, all of the facts gathered. Um, I, again, I read these correspondence. They were all, they were saying the exact same thing, just kind of some different verbiage. Um, I agreed with, with, with these correspondence, um, but Ryan has also gathered a lot of information. Consumers has had a couple meetings um, with with us. Um, there's going to be more information on Wednesday. I would like to then bring that back to make sure we all have the information moving forward. Um, I think that this topic is very diverse, and I think it needs to be a, a committee of the whole where all of our facts and information is in front of us. Fine with me. Are you okay with putting that on for a topic? Yeah, that's fine with me. I just don't want to be dragging our feet on this because these petitions have to be back by May 29th. We've got to be verified before we send them in. Okay. And that's Honestly. a lot of work to get petitions signed, believe me. And if all the townships don't participate in that, it won't happen. And we need... Uh, From what I read on the... 356,958 signatures, good From signatures, it's on the ballot. From what I read on these correspondence, they were taking it from a county perspective, not from a township perspective. Did I read those correspondence wrongly? You read them right. And uh, those counties um, are in a similar situation we are in terms of the zoning. So we have authorities now that are being uh, uh, removed. Uh, so that that's why. But um, it would be very easy if a township wanted to take one of those as a boilerplate and just insert because it's the same thing for all of us. So just insert their township rather than a county. I think they'd be very effective too. Townships. What do you mean? So if a township wanted to pass a similar resolution to what we have up here tonight, would we have uh, Chippewa and uh, Alpena and Huron County? Huron, yeah, in particular, they're, they're focused right in on this. And yes. To go down to the, the bottom of those resolutions where it says, therefore, be it result, very succinctly stated uh, what they would like to see happen. And I think that would be uniform across the state, counties, and townships want that. Uh, uh, particular action uh, to be taken and in effect restore the authority back to the local unit. Okay, in our, go ahead, sir. Right now, the counties have the right to authorize over the state. Correct. Because it's a shorter term limit. If you go to the state, it could take up to two years to get approvals. Correct. So the solar power people would be beneficial, benefit them and the counties to go with the county. Now, I don't know about, I haven't heard anything about the individual townships taking over. Um, most likely all the townships we have now that are going to Ogoma County, they're probably going to stay there. There's only like three townships. Do their, their, they does their own, two, yes. Two, two There's only two townships do their own. And one's, there's one other one in the process. Do their own what? Correct? Their own zoning. Wanting to do their own zoning. Well, Edwards and in West Branch town, townships do their own. The city of West city Branch West does Branch. their own, but you're not going to see a solar farm in the city of West Branch to do because it's not available land for it. And there's also something with finances with with uh, reimbursement on this. If it stayed at a township level, if I'm not misunderstanding, which again we're just gathering this information, and there's going to be a lot more Wednesday um, brought to the zoning uh, committee. There's more money brought to the county if the county. Uh, right. continues to do this authority. So, so yes, ma'am. Um, you talk so much, I forgot what I was going to say. But that's why I, want, I, wanted it, I wanted it at the MTA meetings so I could give it to the townships, to them proper. You know, it's not the county that's doing this. It would be the townships that are doing this, signing these petitions. But they have a focal point here where you can get the petitions back to so they can get them in in time. And get them, and I'm going to go through the clerk's office to get the signatures verified that they are at, that they are registered voters that have the right to sign that. I don't want to send them all in. And guess what? They're bogus, like that one guy that was running for senator. Tim, can you can you elaborate on this? I guess. Yeah, we got a couple of things in play here. We're talking about first those resolutions from these other counties, which I think um, 
very much, you know, ought to go on committee the whole meeting and consider here whether or not we want to support that. Commissioner Simmons is referencing a ballot initiative to get signatures to get a proposal in November to overturn what the state has done, uh, preempting the local control of this. Uh, and that's it's uh, separate from what you would do here. You would just be passing a resolution saying we would like to see this overturned, listing our rationale why. Commissioner Simmons is on the ground getting signatures to make sure it gets on the ballot so that people can vote on it. This was a, a legislative uh, effort that was all done in the legislature and by the governor. The people have not had an opportunity to add their voice to, to actually vote on it. That's right. So that's that's what Commissioner Simmons would hope to achieve uh, with these uh, petitions so that we can get it on the ballot and get a vote. They're different, but yet they're... They correlate. Topic, though, yeah. I, I mean, so again, I think that this should all be, and I'm not really sure what you meant by that comment. I guess I want to make sure that we're all on the same. Uh, My job is to get it out to the townships, to get these signatures on, to get them back to this organization uh, called the um, Citizens for Local Choice uh, to uh, revoke this um, Public Act 233, which gave the state total control of of um, saying yes, if we say no because of our ordinances, the state can come in and override our ordinance and say, no, they can put them there. So I don't want it next to my house. And there's farmer's fields next to my house. I don't want so, I don't want wind turbines. And, uh, you know, they do hum. I do have animals. And uh, I don't want the flicker effect and all that. I don't know what the consequences are for solar, but because um, I haven't been around solar energy but i don't know if it makes a noise or not i guess what what do you want out of us tonight just so that i'm clear i just wanted to let you know that this initiative was going on and the organization that was doing it and then i they sent me the petitions to give to townships so they can get signatures so they can be sent into this organization um citizen for local choice to get it on the november ballot so the people can vote on if they want to give the state or if they want to keep the authority over our own properties up here rather than have the, the government in the state in Lansing control us, basically is what they'd be doing, controlling us. And what we can do with our zoning and stuff means we basically wouldn't have any zoning. Yeah. Mr. Watsi? Um First off, yeah, so we're not holding you back from doing that. I appreciate the fact that you're doing that. You're quarterbacking to get these, and I will I will, pass I will sign that. So thank you for doing that. So I'll, I'll pass what we're doing here tonight isn't holding you back from that. No. Yeah. I will be passing them out at the, at the MTA meeting. Okay. Can we also put this on the committee of the whole so we can all stay updated? Is that is that good? Okay. As long as you don't, as long as you don't try to hold me back. I definitely will not try to hold you back. Commissioner Scott, do you have anything? No. Okay. Nothing. Yeah. Okay. One one more comment about this. Oh goodness. Yes, ma'am. We all have the uh, Township Focus magazine. If you look on page twelve of that magazine, it says two petition proposals seeking November ballot. That's where that is. It's on the two initiatives that are going forward to do away with property taxes and to get our authority back that we control our own area and not the state. And that's page 12, starts at the bottom of the page. It's in our mailbox, correct? It wasn't mine. Thank you, Commissioner Simmons. But I got mine out. Okay. I never get very much mail, so I'm always happy when I get mail. And okay. this was in my mailbox. I will keep that in mind. You can send me a letter anytime. Okay. And any unfinished business? Item 10, administrator slash controller's report. Tim? I uh, owe you an apology. I'm now looking at this and realizing that I put on the iPads the report from two weeks ago. So when the okay. meeting's over, I will go back and email you the report for tonight, uh, which will be more updated two weeks more into the future. <laughs> uh, one thing I did want to report that you'll see in that report when I finally get it, I hate that because I actually had it done on time and it was out there at a reasonable time and oh, it's the wrong one. But anyway, 
Got an interesting situation uh, that developed uh, with transit. Uh, we put out an RFP for wash bots, and that's that uh, machine to wash the buses that'll go into the new building. Um, two proposals came in. One of them came in electronically a day before the deadline, but the deadline was uh, Tuesday at 11 o'clock. Uh, sometime in the afternoon, after about 2 o'clock, another proposal came in. So it was in on Tuesday, but just not before the 11 o'clock hour. There are a couple of approaches uh, to this, and, and luckily there's a committee, the whole meeting before transit meets, so that we can uh, kick this around. The way the RFPs are written, uh, it states very strongly that this is the deadline and that if you don't get your bait in by the deadline, you might be excluded from consideration, but it's worded just like that. The board may exclude. You don't have to. So before the bid is open, we can have a conversation about whether you want to, to waive that and accept that proposal because you can. And it's the only one that came in after 11 o'clock. It was on Tuesday. So, you know, it's good from that respect. This is not uncommon. I've had this happen over the years uh, where a delivery service, maybe a UPS or a FedEx, just doesn't get, get it there before that hour uh, expires. But they did get it there on that day. So even if they did an overnight, they just didn't get it here by 11 o'clock. So um, anyway, we can talk about that further, but I'm going to uh, suggest that you seriously think about accepting both proposals. I have no idea what either one of them says right now, but to have two proposals, you've got something competitive there that, to really work with. Uh, it would not be fair to open it and then say, well, you were late, so we're not going to accept it. I mean, it's just something you want to do before it's actually opened and read and considered. Now, the process for this would be is that the proposals would be sent to the transit committee that have a chance to mull it over and make a recommendation uh, at the following board meeting uh, for you. But it's been a little anomaly, a little bit of fun that we can have, you know, talking about the pros and cons of accepting that proposal. So, yeah, I'm sorry that happened. It's just, but it's, it, it's, yeah, kind of like an occupational hazard. He's, uh, and I'm sure the FedEx tried to get it here as soon as they could, but just missed the 11 o'clock hour. Um, can you give us an update on the grievances? I can. Um, board, uh, just to refresh your memories, there were four grievances filed by the corrections unit. On January 26th, we had a, what we call a step three grievance meeting with the union. Uh, the sheriff's office had already reviewed the grievances and had denied uh, all four. Uh, for lack of um, uh, consistency, whether a lack of a violation in the contract. So we did the grievance uh, meeting. I believe I sent the dispositions to you. They're you know, kind of lengthy, but um, in each case, um, the finding the same as the sheriff, that there were no contract violations. So what happens next is uh, the union has up to 20 days to file notice with the employer, meaning the county, that they would like to take this these grievances to arbitration. What the union does is actually has a, a committee at the Teamsters um, headquarters in, I believe it's right in Detroit, uh, where they look at uh, grievances that are filed and that committee determines whether or not those grievances will be taken forward to arbitration. There is a cost to arbitration, both to the employer and the union, and that's why the union does this. So if they have a grievance, and they look at a disposition and they say, yeah, we probably won't win this. They'll just stop it right there and that'll be the end of it. But it's that committee that makes that determination. Like I said, the union has 20 days from the date of the, the notice uh, to let the county know if they're going to send that to arbitration. That uh, deadline expires on the 26th, which is Monday. So if we hear nothing from the union through Monday, we can consider the matter resolved. Uh, with the last disposition from the employer. Uh, now, you think, because that was issued January 26, gosh, 20 days, That's this is February 26, so it's more than that, but we don't count Saturdays, Sundays, and holidays. We actually had a holiday in there, and then obviously the weekends that came in as well, so that's where we get that calculation from. So that's where things stand right now. I've, I've heard nothing from the union, but it's not uncommon that they wait until you know, we're close to that deadline to put us on notice if they want to go forward. Now, if it does go to arbitration, um, this is a, a situation where the uh, county attorney will now get involved. This is not something covered under the retainer, so it would be an extra cost. But this is literally a hearing in front of an arbitrator. Uh, and they are uh, they do cite uh, legal precedent and everything else. So you definitely want the attorney there to, to handle that. And both sides argue the case for the arbitrator. And the arbitrator says employer, your disposition is what 
what prevails, or they say union, uh, you wanted these, uh, uh, this uh, set of relief. And so it's decided on your behalf. It's one or the other. They don't split the baby. Now, in this case, there are four grievances. So literally, there would be four arbitrations. I would hope they would allow us to handle all this under one umbrella. They may not. They may want uh, you know, separate arbitrations for each one. So we're in a holding pattern until Monday. And then after Monday, we'll know what happens next. I had another question through the video watching um, for the entrances. I didn't hear any update on with the ARPA funds, the consumers. Are we anywhere with the energy? Have we heard anything? No, I'm, I've not even followed up on that, frankly, with uh, the other work I've been doing. Uh, but yes, yeah, it's, uh, it's on my radar, but just not on the top of the list just yet. And have we heard anything from the staffing analysis? Uh... That's an interesting question. And I've actually put that on the agenda for law enforcement committee uh, to talk about the Department of Corrections individual lieutenant, I think it is, that uh, is heading this, made it very clear he will not communicate with me or anyone other than the sheriff on this. Now, this is kind of odd because they required signature of the board chair to proceed with the analysis, and yet they don't want to communicate with us where they are. So I was uh, hoping that maybe the sheriff could give us an update at the law enforcement committee. They haven't said anything, so I'm guessing right now they haven't heard anything back from DOC. Okay. Uh, but uh, that's kind of where we are. And it's, it's disappointing that they take that position, but uh, they, he was not budging. Any questions for Tim? No. Uh, item 11, elected official and department head reports. So Sheriff 2024 uh, statistics and animal control monthly statistics. I see that's on our iPads. Any Anybody here? Anybody have any questions on that? It looked like there was quite a few arrests. I think I seen 70 some. I was kind of shocked by that number. 72? Anyone, yeah. There was it, that number looked up to me for some reason. Did you have something? <laughs> oh. uh, and then animal controls on there too, and that's nice seeing that. Um, treasure cash summary report that's on our iPads as well. Any update on that, Tim? No. Uh, item C zoning board of appeals, February 7th, 2024 meeting minutes. Those were the cell tower in uh, Churchill Township. Right. Um, I don't believe we have a commissioner on the Zoning Board of Appeals. Not that I've seen. Yeah. I just reviewed the minutes. So it looks like that's going to help the fairgrounds out, what they're saying. And so that's good news. Dan, yes. Dan is the liaison between the... Yeah, I forgot you're here. He's, he's here. He's the liaison member between the he is. Yes. Uh, Zoning Board of Appeals and the Planning Commission. Where's this tower going to go? I didn't see an address. It's in, it's in the fairgrounds. In the fairgrounds. Oh, it is. Exact spot. I, I assume that there was a representative from the fair board, and, and they talked about it, but I didn't see that it was actually going on. Uh, Corey Wangler was there from the Oklahoma County Fair Board, but I didn't see exactly where the location was. Yeah, it's, it's going to. It's only kind of building. All pattern. Mm -hmm. going to fall. It's only kind of building. So. Oh, good. Okay. Uh, I don't know, 12, any matters on the floor? Can I talk? Oh. Uh, yeah, I guess I'm sorry. <laughs> I best, I totally bypassed you. I was looking, yes. You might as well just put clerk under there. For yeah, why, why did you not? Every time. <laughs> um, I was letting, doing the ones that were already on there. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Um, I apologize. So, okay. So I'm exciting news. I have a lot of exciting news, actually. Um, the most exciting is after today, the nine days early voting, we have 165 total voters, which is amazing because I truly didn't expect even a third of that. Um, everything has been going super smooth. Um, so we have Friday, Saturday, Sunday left. Um, so that's good. Uh, the other bit of exciting news is I received May ballot proofs today. Um, so I'm already knee deep in May election. Um, so that's, I'm staying busy with that. Um, we have, I had sent the PAR, my financial clerk gave her notice um, we have that position open. I am asking to fill it. I had somebody walk in today, interviewed her, and she can start immediately. So can I please hire her so she can start Monday? 
I, I get I guess I why the why the turnover? Why ask in a public meeting? Pardon me? Why ask that in a public meeting? Because you're asking for for to fill the position. I mean, I'm not asking for specific reasons. I'm asking for an overall general. It didn't work out. She was overwhelmed. I'm not asking for this one single. I guess again, why? What, there's there's there seems to be, and, and maybe it's different positions. I'm not. There just seems to be a, a pretty large turnover in this department. I guess is there a reasoning? Is there a pattern? Or is there something that that, that we can do to change that? Because that's that's a cost. Mm -hmm. right. the, the last two positions have been the same position. Yep. Correct. Yep. It's very detailed work. This is not just data processing or data. I'm asking, asking, data. I, I, I guess I, I. Well, I got a little bit of knowledge in. Okay. I'm just making a comment. Okay. That it, in a trying to help it's clarify it, yeah. it, it's a pretty detailed position. It's just not just filing papers or making data entry. There's a lot of different. Uh, facets to this job and I think the last two people have just been overwhelmed with how much work there's involved because I, I guess again I, I was making no assumptions I'm asking so that maybe we can give some support because I, I work in a business as well and turnover costs money training right. um, of lots of different aspects to this time um, and, and you're in a busy crazy hectic next six months so if we can do anything to maybe retain some employees because prior to the last year or two, and please correct me if I'm wrong, the previous employees were there for a pretty substantial period of time. His, his something changed as a workload. I know this year's well, very busy. But on the workload in general has opt yes, but then we got that part-time person. It's, there's been a lot of turnover in the entire County. That's not just my office. We have only had two people who did not work out because they were not the right person for that job. They decided that um, I don't need anything from you guys except for let me hire. Again, I hope you don't feel targeted. I'm asking to help you to see if there's I anything, don't need anything do. except for you to let me hire is all I need. I think, the, I think the biggest thing that happened in the clerk's office over the past few years is the retirement of long-standing employees. All the key people, yeah. You know, when I first came on board, it was Mrs. Brindley was there. And then... Um, I don't disagree with that, correct. Mrs. Edel left and, and, and the, Diane, left. Diane but, whatever yes. her last name was, she left. And and that and that's it, that it, and that reflects even in the treasurer's office. I mean, Renee Ryland left there and... Uh, um, Mrs. Scott, and you know, we've had quite a bit of turnover, and I think we're seeing an over overwhelm over society that it's a uh, it's a different work ethic. I, I agree with that. I, I do, but the ones that you're just talking about, there was definitely a lot of longevity. If we can do something to continue the longevity, it would be greatly appreciated. Is is yeah? I I don't know what we can do in the confines of a of a union situation we we yeah. can't we can't give individual incentives you you can't incentivize people i don't that. disagree with the, however yeah. union negotiations are coming up so i mean it's just some things to keep in well, mind and again it, there was a lot of longevity and, and i don't disagree yeah. with your statements i was just i think it's gonna think be a very busy year i think it's the same thing you're hearing we're hearing at all our township levels too the clerk's offices are hitting getting overwhelming changes coming yep. through. I think, everybody, I think all of you are hearing that in all your township meetings, your clerk's offices are mm -hmm. getting overwhelming changes, more and more coming down. And the clerk and the clerk at the county level is even more so than the township level uh, because they deal so much with courts too, whereas the townships don't deal with the courts. Um, I I like your idea that you want to offer something that's just that it wasn't an offer. It was just is is there well, anything that we can do? There was nothing actually put on the table. It was it was actually kind of a, a roundabout statement just to give any type of support because I I, I it's exhausting going through yeah. uh, staff turnovers. It's it's exhausting. Um, it 
Absolutely. I've been there and it's it's a lot better when you have longevity and consistency and everything and runs lot, smoother. It's a lot better when you're in a you know you know position where you can give incentives. Mm -hmm. and, That's fair. And we can't because with a union with the union uh, atmosphere, you have to incentivize everybody the same way. You can't you can't just give the the, the higher producing people something. Everybody has to get it, you know. Anything, anything? Did you have anything, Commissioner Simmons? I don't know. I just heard this call about that. There's a lot of heard, pardon people me? People of the township that are retiring and leaving. And I heard a lot of it had Actually, to do with the uh, mandates the state's shoving down the throat, and it's just overwhelming. Mm -hmm. How many clerks? Could you? Um, I know. Three. My my four. town my township's turning over four people this year. Four, yeah, you guys are. There's four four clerks that I know of. We're turning over um, supervisor, treasurer, and trustees this year. And again, the clerks that are done are all they. I mean, they've been Medicare for three years. Oh yeah, they, they're all on Medicare. Yeah. Thanks, supervisors only. Okay. So do you need a, a motion from us for the, or just a overall generalized approval? Just general nodding of the head will be fine. Because I thought we had the motion that she could hire for that position. Well, um, well recognized, I just nodded. It was a different position. I thought it was the same position. Yeah, this one, there was, uh, it, the last time it was filled was the prior fiscal year. So you didn't have that rule in play. This year you've got it in place. So the department has to come in. How long was this person in, in, in the position that just left? Thirty-three days or something like that. Yeah. Well, I don't. I don't see a problem with it. Just again, if there's anything that you, you moving forward, there was discussion. That was it. Matters from the. And did I miss anybody? I have Any? a question. I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. The clerk. How many people have been in to vote? I'm sorry, I missed that number. Hundred and what? One sixty-five. Thank you. You're welcome. <clears throat> anything else? No. Any other elected officials, department heads? Uh, Manners from the floor. Motions for adoption. Commissioner reports. Um, I, the meeting minutes are on there. Those are very nice. Uh, Commissioner Wilsey. Um, I've got a lot of my thing coming up here beginning of the month. Um, you know, we started our our housing, our Ogama County Housing Commission. We had our first meeting uh, last Tuesday. Uh, the meeting went very well. We're very excited about that. We've got some real strong, strong people on that committee. Um, currently, right now, there's a few individuals that have come into the the West Branch area, especially, and uh, they're really looking into some pretty big, uh, big things. Uh, it's more than just kind of a dream. It's, they've been talking with planning. They've been talking with EDC. They've been talking with officials, um, and it could really bring a lot of big things to our area. Um, so the, the timing on all this is absolutely perfect. Uh, we will have our next uh, open meeting for the housing on March 26th at 9, 9 a.m. in the commissioner's room over in the county building. Uh, Lenny Avery, who you guys have heard me talk about a lot, who is our fiduciary at Northeastern Housing Partnership. Um, he will be at that meeting. Um, this developer by the name of Tommy Galt, who some of the things that I've spoke about already um, is... Uh, come to the area and he's got a lot of things that he wants to possibly bring here. Um, so that's going to be a really big meeting. We're looking forward to that, but the timing couldn't be any more perfect right now. We, we know obviously at a County level, the huge need for housing, um, rental housing, you know, the state has put all this money into it. We're part of the Northeast housing partnership. We just started a housing commission. We have some de developers wanting to get aggressive. We have construction workers that want to start building, um, it could be a great opportunity for us right now. So I know everybody's been working hard at it. Um, we had a couple of those developers come into our EDC meeting uh, that we had on Tuesday. Uh, it's exciting stuff. So I'll keep you guys posted on that. Um, EDC meeting was this past Tuesday. Um, the EDC is really working on uh, a lot of different things. And the main thing is exposure. You know, the EDC does a lot of great things. A lot of people just don't really understand what they do. 
from small little business startups to big and what they can all bring to the area. So we're really going to start a boots on the ground campaign uh, where we're going to get more involved with the townships and uh, be at township meetings explaining our value. Um, you know, since the county decided this year not to support the EDC financially, we're also working on fundraising and trying to find other avenues of um, raising money. But the EDC is going strong. We've got a very strong board, and I'm really excited for this coming year. Um, those are those are pretty much the the, the things right now. Nick, my next report is going to be you know real detailed. Uh, real quick, uh, we had a transit meeting last week. We we did discuss uh, the promotions. We had Kirk from Gaylord come back in because we knew you guys had some uh, concerns, and your concerns were very valid. Uh, Kirk was spent probably 40 minutes with us, answered a lot of those. So we will um, be bringing that up probably next next week well, to discuss. Seven, two weeks. Yeah, in two weeks. Yep. Um, yep. In two weeks we'll be bringing that to discuss. Um, constructions, you know, continuing to move forward out there on the cold storage building. You know, Tim talked to you about the uh, the wash bot there. Um, that's uh, that's about all I have for tonight. Do we open this bids tonight or do we open it to me as all those bids? I'm actually we would open those at the transit committee. Okay, gotcha. Okay, makes sense. Uh Commissioner Simmons. Uh, a <clears throat> couple of things. Um to reiterate what uh Commissioner Wilsey said. Um those buses are really going to look nice if this if this goes through. I mean a lot different than they look now. Really, really, really nice. So I hope it works out like we have all planned. Uh, as far as the Hitley goes, we have now a, um, the name of our committee is called the County Restoration Millage Committee. Has that paperwork gone through to do that yet? Yeah. Filed tomorrow. Oh, filed tomorrow. Okay. So if anybody wants to make a donation, they can make it to the County Restoration Millage Committee. And uh, or you can bring cash. You take either checks or cash uh, to help educate uh, the people in our county and townships about uh, the Headley um, override. So um, we right now have um, a couple of people working on, on the flyer and uh, one working on the um, design of the flyer. And we're hoping for the M MTA meeting that we will have paper copy, probably not the hard uh, copy, but a paper copy of what this uh, flyer will be looking like and the information that will be on it. But um, it's too soon to get the actual cards back, the postcards back from the printing company because it wouldn't give them enough time between now and, and the 29th. So that's where we are right now with the, with the Headley rollback. So, and we discussed it pretty thoroughly and uh, to make sure that we give all the people in the county all the information um, for this Headley rollback millage. So I'm not trying to hide anything. So I'll be right out there, right on the webpage. So that's my biggest concern is that. I, I had a question. Yes. I reviewed the budget to meeting minutes. Can I, can I ask for some explanation or further input? Do you mind? Go ahead. Um, it looks like there was a, a comment uh, or a question related to it. It says, uh, asked that the county has received any marijuana money at this time. Um, it says that we're going to, but not exactly sure when. I, I guess, can do we know anything about that? Well, go ahead, Tim. And I'm no expert on this, but my understanding is that it's going to lag about a year behind. So we had a couple of... Uh, uh, marijuana facilities open in the county here in the last year mm -hmm. and there was a little bit of money that was received last year just a couple of thousand dollars but um, I again from memory uh, it sounds like when the marijuana retailers uh, pay their fees to the state the state then disperses it across the state depending on how many facilities you have in your in your community so the county is in line to receive some of that but there's absolutely no indication yet how much that might be if we go off from what other counties have received it could be substantial but again i don't know quite how the formula works so it'll be something uh, but we'll have to wait and see it's it's kind of up in the air as to exactly what kind of dollar amount we're talking about is there a timeline 
Um, there is, I, I couldn't tell you when it is, the state will disperse it annually at a, on a date, but again, there, I guess I can understand why there would be a lag if everybody has paid in their money and the state doesn't know how much is coming in either. So they take their time to make sure it's all distributed according to whatever formula is in that statute. So that's, that's why the delay, but when, I don't know. I mean, this is all new. So. Another thing with these minutes, what's the difference between individual bonds versus blanket bonds? There are some cost questions there. Well, right now, the let's use the clerk's office and the treasurer's office as examples. The employees in those offices are bonded, and right now they go out and get their bonds on their own. Uh, they're not expensive, about sixty dollars a year or something like that. You know, depending again on your level of, uh, um, you know, uh, level of Any risk, money. I guess. Uh, the thought was that um, if we could put in for put in give a blanket bond so everybody in the county is covered, there might be some savings. Um, but we don't know. Now, one of the other groups, I think it was actually Danielle that brought it up with the courts. So they, yes. I mean, they're bonded as well. So, you know, is there there's some umbrella that we can all be uh, covered under or do we have to go individual? And right now we're just sort of in the state of doing it like we've always done it. So it's a it's a new question we're in pursuit. Yeah, that question was just brought up in our last budget. That's why I brought it up because I was re I was reviewing the minutes. Yeah, it's it brought up, and so we have to we don't know yet if you can do an umbrella or does it have to be done like it's being done now? So that's what we're looking into. Anything else, Commissioner Simmons? No, that's all I have. Commissioner Scott, I attended uh, my townships and city meeting, uh, and committee meetings. Uh, the uh, the city the uh, housing committee uh, meeting was brought up and and uh, talked about quite a bit. Uh, they they're in total agreement with that. They like it. Um, well, as far as the law enforcement committee, uh, I've been watching the Facebook page for the sheriff, and he's been really stepping up on more more postings, and then. It was funny because I was looking at the transit committee minutes and you guys were talking about getting a Facebook page, which is, and this, just this last week, I had an apartment that I, we finished uh, remodeling and I, I, for the first time, put it on Facebook. Unbelievable how fast that got out there. And, uh, and I mean, I got responses, good responses right away, you know, and I had it run it in the first day. I mean, and, uh, and so I, I wonder, and I know, and I don't want to drag a, a dead horse through the thing, but boy, if if you put, if you had a price, what it cost to wrap a van, wrap a bus, and you already knew the price and what you wanted to make off of it and put it on free on Facebook, because out, Ray said that we couldn't advertise with federal dollars, but you put it on Facebook. I'll bet you you would get an answer pretty darn fast from prospective people, but that's just an observation. Um, Foster Township, they had a few local things they took care of up there. Uh, uh, the city, the city uh, was working on a couple of different things. Uh, some special permits and things like that. Uh, Ogama Township, uh, Mr. Dalt, Tommy Dalt there, he's from the uh, sports complex. He was also at the airport meeting. It, this, this, if this complex happens, it's going to be up into the airspace of the, the airport. So they're gonna, they have to ask for a variance for it. Um, federal, FCC regulation says that uh, you got to, from the end, that both ends of the airport, certain areas that you can't have things exceed a certain height, you know. And even though it's two miles, it's more like four miles away, guidelines say it could be higher. So uh, kind of just like you're talking about those towers and stuff. So, uh, yeah, I got to see him twice in the same day. I was something else, uh, I guess. And I talked to Ryan quickly when coming in. So we'll, we'll, we'll see how this project all works out. Um, 
of course, we mentioned once before, I think, at the airport, we got uh, the award from the Michigan Department of Transportation. Well, our director was down there for two-day conference and received, received the award. And that's General Aviation Airport of the Year. So pretty proud of what Ben's been doing out there. So that's what I got. Where's that gentleman from, that Tommy? He lives here in the county. Oh, he does. Okay. Married a, I was thinking Gaylord. Married a local girl. Oh, okay. Do you have anything, Commissioner Mayhem? Yeah, I went to Rose Township, and uh, they're still having trouble with the Left and Fire Department deal. They're still trying to work that out. And the clerk at Rose Township wanted to know why they didn't get, uh, they're not going to get reimbursed for the May election like they used to. I don't know, but I laughed. What? Well, this is the first I'm hearing of this. What is she wanting to know? Uh, Actually, she can call me. And uh, something about reimbursement for the May election. The state reimburse. Oh, May election. May not February. Mm, I she can. I can call her. I have no idea what. Yeah, I don't either. I told her I'd ask, and I did. Uh, I went to West Branch Township, and the city of West Branch was there talking to them about trying to get an officer from the city for West Branch Township. And other than that, it was pretty quiet. Were you going to say something, Mr. Scott? Did you say something? No, no I can't. I had a question. I I should have asked when you were talking about the transit. I apologize, but with those with those uh, minutes. Per diem payments, didn't we already agree at that on the per diem payments for the committee yeah. members? Yeah, we did a while ago. But it says added per diem payment at to at large transit committee appointments. That was just at this last meeting. I thought I say I thought we passed a resolution. Did I miss? Okay. Oh, we did. Okay. We passed that stuff out, didn't we? Yeah. 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 Oh, the meeting minutes. Okay. Yeah. Um, I didn't. I only, I only attended two meetings. Um. I had a lot going on the last two weeks. Uh, Richland uh, Township, I attended that. They talked a lot about the early voting, uh, the li library millage um, that they are putting on uh, the ballot. That was really it there. And I also attended the uh, village of Prescott. They had some issues with uh, snow removal, some equipment being uh, broke down, their septic and receiving water treatment plant out there. Um, they're getting a pretty large grant um, that they applied for and did receive. Um, they're just waiting for uh, that grant that 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 needs some really uh, updates out there. Having some key issues with readings. Um, they're hoping they get that grant and they can uh, start with those updates. Because um, as of right now, they're they're definitely not making money on that out there. Um, it's it's it needs some some major up, upgrades. So I missed a 911 meeting. I was sick with influenza. Um, Michigan works. We uh, have an upcoming meeting and then we have a zoning meeting on uh, this upcoming week. So that's it with me, short and sweet. Can I add a couple of things? I, Go ahead. I know it's got crossed here. Um, Mills Township, the library a while back got flooded. Yeah. The library in Skidway is used by a lot of our, our residents, especially our residents that don't have internet. And then also they hold a lot of different meetings there. It's a very busy building. Got flooded. Um, the restoration works in process. But financially, the library's been hurting for a long time. I know the township's given them some money to help keep them afloat. Well, we were, the township was informed through MTA that legally, since we do not have a contract with the library, we cannot give them money. So... The township's attorneys and the library and the township officials are going to get together and talk because we we know the importance of the library and they're going to sit down and try to get something figured out so we can keep the library open. Um, and then the other thing I wanted to add, I'll have more information at the next meeting. I just left the EMS board meeting right before here and we had our audit through Stevenson and uh, Good to report that we are in a little more favorable position than we were last year. Um, we still got a long ways to go, but we're more favorable. Um, our new director there, I feel, is doing a very strong job looking at a lot of different items. You know, one, of course, I've just told you guys before about overtime costs. 
And uh, so he's really working hard. The assistant director has got on board and really working well with them. We've got a good morale out there. Um, but I'll report more, a little more of the, the numbers for the next meeting. Because like I said, I just got out of that meeting and came here. That's it. General public comment? Any? Any public comment on the phone? Good sir. Hang I couldn't sure Scott if I asked if there was any public comment. Any public comment on the phone? Motion to adjourn. Motion yep. to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. All in favor say yes. Yes. We will be adjourned, guys. It's 45. Thank you. That was silly.